A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Many people were shocked and distraught by the tragic death of the rabbi's wife, Rabbanit Sharon Zatzal. At the funeral, people took note of the fact that the rabbi was wearing a talit throughout and were surprised because they had been taught that it is forbidden to openly wear tzitzit in the presence of the dead or in a cemetery. Can the rabbi please explain why you wore a talit? Before I respond to that question, I wish to take this opportunity to thank all the many uh, hundreds if not thousands of people who came to the Lawaya or to the Shiva and the many many people who wrote uh, letters, emails and many phone calls from Israel and from around the world uh, all of your efforts and sentiments are and were appreciated and Tizkullah Misworth. Regarding this question of uh, wearing a talith in a cemetery or near a cemetery is the common wisdom that this is not to be done. However, it needs to be pointed out that there is absolutely no source in Hazal that uh, makes such a statement or such a claim. And in fact, if we look at the uh, what the Talmud actually does state, we find and we see that the picture is, is rather different. So I'll read a couple of things from the Talmud Bavli in Masechet Barachoth, Daf Yod Het Amud Aleph. The Gemara here quotes on uh, line 21 or line 22, Lo Adam HaKivaroth, a person should not walk through or be in the, the uh, cemetery, Utfilin Berosho, whilst wearing tefillin on his head, which means that the tefillin are also visible as a rule. Wasefer Torah Bizro'o, or whilst holding a Sefer Torah in his arms. Wekore, Wekore means okore, in other words, or study Torah with or without a Sefer Torah, even by heart. Weim Moseken Ove Mishum Laeg Larash Heref Oseho. In other words, here we have an explicit baraita, an explicit statement from the Tanaim, which says that a person is not to be in a Beth Kivaroth, uh, or near, near the dead, within Arba Amoth, within four Amoth, two meters approximately of a dead person, uh, whilst wearing tefillin, or whilst wearing, holding a Sefer Torah, or whilst stud studying Torah. And the reason for this is so that a person will not be seen to be uh, treating the dead uh, buried in that cemetery or the dead person before him or the, the single grave next to him, that a person should not be seen to be showing disrespect for these people because they are no longer able to, uh, able to perform the miswath and uh, those who are alive are able to perform the miswath. So we see that performing a miswath is a very great thing and someone who cannot do so is to be pitied and uh, to do it in a blatant fashion uh, in a cemetery or next to a, the dead is uh, possibly it can be viewed as being disrespectful or uh, showing a lack of sensitivity to those who are not so fortunate and not able to perform the miswa. So this Baratha speaks about not wearing tefillin, not wearing, not holding a separate Torah, not studying Torah. It does not say anything about not wearing tzitzit or talit in Beth Kavaroth. Further down the same page, we, are, we find that the following uh, ma'aseh, the following story is related. It says that it once happened that Rabbi Hiyan and Rabbi Yonathan, that's the girsa we have here, there are other girsa with the names of the particular Moraim, but two Moraim were walking through Beth Kavaroth. Hawa kashadiyah techelethad Rabbi Yonathan. The techeleth, the tzitzit, which includes the string of techeleth, of Rabbi Yonathan was dragging along the ground, was trailing along the ground over the graves. 
Amale Rabbi Hiya, so one said to the other, Rabbi Hiya said to him, Dalye, lift it up, says Rashi, this is what the word means, Hagbihen, in other words, lift it up, raise it up off the ground. So that they, the dead, will not say, they will not be insulted, they will not be slighted by what you're doing. They will say, tomorrow they are coming to join us, and now they are treating us lightly, making light of us. That is the statement that we. These, these are the two statements we find in the Gemara on that uh, on that daf. So, for the first statement, we see that it is definitely a sur, and this is agreed to by all to enter a uh, a cemetery with wearing tefillin, at least when they're um, visible to the to the eye. If they're covered entirely, if one ha- wears the tefillin under one's hat, for example, there are many posakim who say it's mutar in that case as well, but. Uh, Normally, that's not how tefillin are worn. They're usually visible. So it says not to wear tefillin the Beth Kvarot, not to hold a Sefer Torah, not to study Torah next to within four Amoth of the day. This is also what the Rambam writes. This is agreed to by all. Now we see the story of Rabbi, Rabbi Hiya and Rabbi Yonathan walking through the graveyard. And from the story, we understand that certainly Rabbi Yonathan was wearing a talith which had on a sisith. And Rabbi Hiya told him, don't let it trail along the ground, raise it up off the ground. So it doesn't trail along the, uh, uh, and be dragged over the graves. And one can assume that if one was wearing a talith, which you see, so was the other probably. So we're talking about two Amoraim walking through a graveyard wearing a talith. From this story, if you look at it, if you examine it for a moment, one realizes very quickly that rather uh, than having a proof in this story that wearing a talith and a beth kvaroth is Asur, what we see, what we can learn from this story is that it is Mutar. And that's what they were doing. They were walking through the Beth Kvarot wearing a Talith with Sisith. The issue in the eyes of uh, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Hiya was that lest this be understood or perceived as some kind of uh, lack of respect to the dead, the Sisith should not be allowed to, to be trailing over the, the graves quite Mamash touching the graves. They should, it should be raised up above them so it doesn't touch the graves. That's the most that one can understand from this ma'aseh, and nothing, nothing more than that. And that is why we find in the, uh, in the Rif, in the Rambam, in the Geonim, uh, this, uh, such a statement that uh, a talith or sisith may not be brought uh, in the, uh, may not be worn in, in the Beth Kvaroth is not to be found. In fact, the entire ma'aseh is not mentioned at all by the Rif or the Rambam, and I think the reason is very clear, because uh, even according to this story, it's not at all, I think, correct. Certainly it's not necessary to understand this is a hard and fast halakha, that one must not allow the sisith to touch the graves, but rather it's midat hasiduth. It's, uh, it's better, it's proper to behave in that way, but it's not an absolute hova. And the Reef and the Rambam and others uh, of that sort, that school of thought amongst the Posakim, do not usually bring midat hasiduth. They bring that which is halakha, which, which obligates everybody. And here we're talking about two very pious people, two hasidim, and one says to the other, that's not, that's not the, something that you should do. But that, that doesn't actually make it a sur. And that is why you will not find such a halakha in, uh, in those sources. And this is what we find in the tour, in Yoradei Asim and Shin Samach Zayn. The tour quotes the Baratha we just mentioned, Lo yalech adam b'retha kevaroth utfilin berosho. You're not allowed to pray or to study Torah in a Beth Kvaroth. There's also a sort to study by heart, to recite things by heart, Mishnayoth or Pesukim. This is only true, it only is a sort to do so within Arba Amoth of a Kever, within four Amoth of, a, of the Beth Kvaroth or within the Beth Kvaroth next to a Kever. Abal Huzl Arba Amoth Mutar. Outside Arba Amoth of the Beth Kvarot, beyond four Amoth from the Kever is Mutar. And then he goes on to quote the Torah, with Aukar Tefillin, Ushal Miswot, Tochayosebahen. This is true of Tefillin. Aval Sisith, when it comes to wearing Sisith, Shahu Hobat Haberet, Mutar, it is Mutar to do so, to wear it in the Beth Kvarot. Shainoya Holif Shot Beradau, Keshinichnas Lebetha Kvarot, because he's not expected to remove his clothing or take off his coat or his jacket or his cloak or his talith, uh, which is a kind of a shawl, 
and uh, this is something that many people wore in those days as a matter of course, uh, you're not expected to remove your clothing when you enter Beth Kvaros. And this is also uh, what we find that the uh, read, Rabbi Yishayel Ditrani, writes in Piskei Arid, Psechet Barachot Daf Yudhel, he writes, Mikan Mochiyah, from here when one can prove, Sha'azhu Asur, Mishum Lo'ek Larash, it is Asur then when walking through the Beth Kvaros for the city to be dragging along the graves, that it's Asur. Because it is seen and is obvious, Shaitas says he thought nigreret ala kavrot because he says it was dragging along the graves and trailing along the graves. That is something too, too uh, obvious and too uh, blatant to be overlooked. Uchashihirbia, but when he lifted it up, afal pishayolech mu'taf alehen and bahem yishol lekharash. But when walking through the uh, Beth Kavaroth, when with having lifted the Sasith off the grave, so it doesn't touch the graves, then it's not considered Loik Larash, and by him Mishum Loik Larash, says the read. Because it, it seems he's just wearing his garment, his clothing. They're not Dafka to make him the Miswa of Sasith. So we see that the, the more obvious and, and uh, straightforward understanding of the sugya, of the statements in the Gemara is that the Braitha explicitly speaks about tefillin or Osefet Torah or studying Torah or praying n- next to the dead or in the Beth Kavaroth and the, the Ma'aseh of those two Amoraim is speaking specifically about the fact that the Sisith should not be allowed to drag along the graves, that is considered disrespectful and even that is not clear at all that any, it's really Asur, but more likely it's a Midat Hasidut, which is why Rif the Rambo and many other Posakim do not mention any such thing. If so, what is the source for saying that one should not do so? This uh, entire approach uh, can be uh, attributed to uh, one source, and that is Rabbeinu Yonah. Rabbi Yonah is also quoted by the Torah that we read before. It's quoted by the Rosh and Sechet Berachot. I'll read it here from the Torah. He writes, V'chathav arav Rabbi Yonah, V'zeu dawkavi mehem. This is true, what we just explained, what the read, Barat Tosafot, and what we just read in the read, etc. That Sisith is mutar to where Sisith in a Beth Kevaroth. This is true, says Rabbi Yonah, but only in those days, the time of the Mishnah, the Talmud. Because they wore clothing, which had four corners, and they made sisith on their garments. And one could not expect people to remove their clothing. But our talitoth that we wear nowadays are only for the purpose of, being, of performing the miswa. Therefore, that's like tefillin. It's a special, a special object which, is, which exists, which we wear, for the purpose of wearing tefillin, of wearing, of like wearing tefillin, which is to perform a specific miswa. It's not being worn just as a garment. So says uh, Rabbeinu Yonah. Therefore, Rabbeinu Yonah suggests that nowadays we should not wear a talit in the Beth Kavaroth. And the Rosh uh, seems to agree with this position. So we have a uh, mahloket here between, between the Posikim, that's quite clear. There are those who don't mention any uh, any issue at all, no problem at all. And those, there are those like the Reef and the Rambam, the Re, the Re and the Re, Re explain why this is so. On the other hand, we see Rabbeinu Yonah is Mahadesh, that this was only true in once upon a time, and nowadays it is not true. But that one has to mention there is another aspect to this discussion, and that is the, what, this, what the Gemara states in Mu'id Katan, Daf, Teth, Wawa, Amud, Alef, and that is that an Avel is Hayav Ba'atifat Arosh, that an Avel is required to uh, cover his head, and not just to cover his head, but to cover it in a certain manner uh, with a talith or a sudar, as is mentioned by the Tur in Siman uh, Shin Pei. Well, in the name of Rav Matityahu Gaon, uh, that the Avel is required to cover his head with a talith or a sudar. A sudar is a kind of uh, a large scarf which one can wrap over one's head and, and uh, throw over the side, the side of one's head to the, over one's shoulder, and that's called, and cover the bottom part of one's face, that's called Atifati Shmeilim, and that is a requirement, and this is quoted by the Torah and the Shulchan Aruch in Siman Shin Pei Well. Over there in Siman Shin Pei Well, in the Yoradei the Torah, 
The Bith Yosef quotes uh, the Ramban, who quotes the Hagoth Maimunioth and the Sefer Miswoth, Sefer Miswoth, the Smab, who say as follows, that Ba'elu Amalchioth, here in these countries, namely in uh, Western Europe, the Middle Ages, lo na'ruchen, we do not uh, do this thing called Atifa Tishmeri, or Atifa, Atifa Bichlal, we don't cover our heads in this fashion, Mipneshim evili des hok gadol, mina goyim, because this, uh, causes us to be ridiculed by the non-Jews. And the uh, servants from the non-Jews who live amongst us in our homes and uh, work in our homes. And this cause, it seems to them to be a, a, a matter for hilarity and ridicule. And therefore we don't do it. So what do we see from And this is also something along these lines is quoted by the, uh, by the Rama in the Shulchan Aruch who says that this is not our minhag. We do not do atifat, uh, atifa for the avil. Doesn't do atifa at all, and one should not be mahmir to do something which our forefathers did, have not did not do. Uh, th- this approach is this this uh, is more of a hashkafa in many ways, and uh, can be one can argue that point as we see the Beit Yosef does disagree with this kind of thinking. The Beit Yosef writes, "Wa anu lo ra'inu wa lo shamanu mi she patar mi atifa mi paneta anazo." I have never heard or seen anybody who was poter, who exempted uh, an avel from that which is, is required by the Talmud and, uh, and the Hazal to do. I've never heard of anyone exempted avel from doing so because uh, non-Jews may find it uh, ridiculous. And I think this is a very essential, very fundamental point that we must you must consider, and not just with regards to this halakha, but with regards to many halakhot and many uh, ideas and concepts and, a, and uh, essential hashkafoth um, of the Torah. We are not to uh, uh, change or adapt our thinking and the way we perform our, the miswot of the Torah according to what other people, particularly Gentiles, may consider funny or, or what have you. One could also make such a claim regarding tefillin. I'm sure that many non-Jews who have seen Jews wearing tefillin consider it to be very funny and unusual practice, if not, if, if not more than that. Perhaps they think it's totally insane. And people who do this, must, there must be something very wrong with them. And that, that would be a, a claim that, I, that no one has made, I think, uh, regarding not why one should not wear tefillin, for example. The same is true for this, uh, for this miswa here, this hova of atifa for the avel. We should not, it seems to me, as opposed to what the Ramah says, I'm, I here must, uh, I find myself obligated to follow the, uh, the view of the Beth Yosef. We are not to modify our behavior or refrain from performing a, performing a miswa because uh, other nations or other cultures or other ways of thinking do not uh, do not view things as we view them and do not see things in the same light or have different uh, ideas and notions. This, I think, is a basic uh, a fundamental issue of, about regarding Judaism being a Jew, that we must think as Jews and act as Jews and not uh, try to fit in with other people's, wa- other people's ways and ideas. So, in summary, there is uh, a miswa, a hova, for the avel, to wear an atifa of a talith or a sudar uh, over his head and around his neck during the aveluth, and this is the pr- and, and it is the practice of the temanim to start doing so even during the levaya. I have been to some temani uh, levayoth funerals, and I, this is what I have seen: that they wear the talith, the mourners wear the talith in this fashion already during the levaya, and this is what I did based on that hova mentioned in the Gemara in Mo'il Katan, Daf Tethwal, and based on the fact that from the Gemara in Brachot, Daf Yudhet, it is quite plain that there is absolutely no Isur in wearing a Talith in the Beth Kvarot. In fact, one could prove from the Gemara there, from the Ma'aseh of those two Amoraim, that uh, it is entirely mutar to do so, because, because that in fact is what they were doing. And this, to me, and this is also the approach of, uh, of many of the Rishonim, as we've explained, and therefore this to me seems the more correct, the more authentic, and the uh, more intellectually honest and uh, uh, Jewish perspective on the matter. Thank you, Rabbi Baruch Hayim.
We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the Rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.